Uh, the cost of the machines for the international airports have been given at um, 3 billion, 233 million, and 600,000, inclusive of 7% VATs. Naira. Naira. 3 billion Naira, 3 billion, 233 million, 600,000. At 3.2 approximately. With um, a completion period of 12 months, we can get the money from, where we, from the moment we give them the money. Uh, it's customized, so they are going to build it for us from the companies abroad. And they have a completion period of 12 months to um, do that. Then um, somebody asked about the advantage of um, the agreement with Guyana. Um, Guyana, any, any country where you open a route, you know, to go and come, it's always an advantage of citizen in terms of trade and in terms of movement, in terms of holidays and all of that. But most importantly, uh, Guyana is a South American country. And you should know that our routes so from Nigeria to South America, uh, they are not many or even non-existent. If you want to go to Brazil now, you have to go first to, to London. To catch, and they, Brazil is just four hours or five hours across the Atlantic on our, on our left-hand side. So if you have a direct flight to Brazil, you'll spend four and a half hours. But right now, you may spend up to 18 hours. you first go and transit somewhere, maybe in Europe first, to get to, get to you know, a South American country. So anything that opens up that route for us, the South American route, where you can go there and then transit to maybe Colombia or Brazil and all that. It can be a transit point too for, for Nigerians who are visiting the South American um, uh, countries. This agreement has been signed long before we even came into power. So 2014, it was signed but not ratified. And they have been pushing for the ratification because they also want to uh, come to Nigeria to, to do their businesses and um, other things. Um, <clears throat> as to the plane that landed in Nasaba, uh, immediately yesterday, I called for a report on it, and um, immediately also, uh, I summoned the heads of all my agencies. Uh, I'm sure you've seen it, and I speak with you as I'm here. They've been waiting for me since 2 o'clock. So I'm leaving here straight to that meeting now with the, with the heads of the agencies. And I'm sure, because of my uh, concern, I'm sure you have seen the press release by the NCA, suspending the wet leases of United. If you have not seen it, that release has um, since come out. Um, that is a precautionary step that the NCA, NCA took uh, until they find out the real, you know, cause of um, uh, that. But then, because um, precaution needs to be, some caution needs to be applied, and we have to take precaution, I mean, uh, the NCA decided to suspend wet leases, the wet leases by United. Not so that answers the other question too. It's not wet leases generally, but the United wet lease. What's a wet lease? A wet lease is when you go and hire a plane outside the country and they bring their crew, their pilot, the crew, and everybody. So they may not be familiar with your terrain. If it's a Nigerian pilot, once it's descending to another place, ah, this, this will not look like Abuja for me, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but a wet lease, a white man or somebody, a foreigner, flying the plane, if a foreigner is flying the plane, he just follows the, the coordinate given to him. And if it's a wrong coordinate, you know, well, if it's a Nigerian pilot, say, ah, this is not the coordinate that takes me to Abuja. So I think that's a precautionary measure that the agency took. Uh, let me be clear that a minister does not get involved in regulation. I'm sure you all know that. So when anything happens, say, minister of aviation, minister of aviation, mm -mm, he's a regulator. But my duty as minister which I have sought you know, to enforce and implement to the end, is to ensure that they do their work. And that's why I've summoned them, to ensure that they, do their, they enforce their regulations to the, to the letter. And I told all of them, the way I will not give excuses to my president, who has appointed me here, I don't want excuses from them. Anytime there is an incident, I told them, anytime there is an incident at the airport, an aircraft, the tire gets bust, or some fuel issue and all that, there's a failure of regulation somewhere. Because somebody ought to have inspected that tire before the plane took off, to know that the tire is not fit for landing. 
somebody should have inspected the runway to say that it's not fit for landing. And you land and you skid up the runway. So anytime there's an incident, the first assumption is that there's a failure of regulation somewhere. And that, of course, is what I intend, intend to impress upon them. And like I said, I will not give my president excuses. This involves the lives of Nigerians. It's a very delicate you know, ministry I find myself. The lives of Nigerians. And so I will not take excuses to the way my president will not take excuses from me. And that's it, you know, I intend to uh, do today. But of course, we'll look at the technical issues and we'll brief the press too in my office after we've finished it. But I've reacted um, to, that, to these developments and the, the NCA have also reacted. Um, the last question, time frame, constellation, is about the Air Nigeria uh, project. Um, I have deliberately not granted the full press interview. Um, I've heard all kinds of things going on, all kinds of brickbats in the social media. But I cannot preempt my president. I have no, I cannot. <laughs> all the documents, all the reports, everything we have forwarded to Mr. President. The issues we met on the ground. But just to say that, it would have been irresponsible of me as minister to take over office and I, I, I feel the pulse of Nigerians. I feel... Even the National Assembly raised concerns over that. And so many stakeholders. It would have been responsible to, to close my eyes totally to those concerns. So because of that, we suspended it to say, let's just look at all the issues and recommend. Now we have looked at all the issues. And it's before Mr. President. But let me just give one or two snippets because of Nigerians who are, you know, very, you know, uh, who are quick to judge. In the agreement, you are giving tax waivers to Ethiopian airline coming into Nigeria. They, they asked for tax waivers for five years. And you granted them to come and compete with your local airlines who are paying those heavy taxes. How? You want to create a monopoly. That's why when they tell you that, oh, we want to crash price by 70%, it's a lie. It's robbing Peter to pay Paul. Because they have removed all taxes from you and you granted them to the tax waivers. And initially, oh, they will crash prices. Once you drive every, every other person out of the market, you now, you now have a monopoly that you can hike it 500%. Nobody there to challenge you. The only thing that brings down prices in the commercial world is competition. It's fair competition. In the agreement, they also, they also made you know, a proposal that they will appoint everybody, top management, everybody at Topia in Nigeria. And we agreed. We agreed. I'm just giving you snippets. I'll do a full interview. I will not give, I will not give more. So, when I'm ready to talk, I will talk. But I cannot preempt Mr. President. We have raised all the concerns before him. Thank you. <laughs>